Good morning, everybody. Sunday morning again. Gee, it comes around quick, doesn't it? But here we are again, and it's just a wonderful opportunity for us to gather on the net electronically and to just remember that we do have brothers and sisters and friends in the fellowship of the saints. And uh, here we are today, whatever capacity we have, not quite sure where all these um, restrictions are opening up to and where we're going, but anyway, we just go on anyway, won't we? The main thing is we have the opportunity to praise the Lord. Psalm 23, such an awesome bedrock of our faith. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. That's a declaration of who he is and the benefits to us. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. Doesn't seem like that at times, and particularly today, but it's all to do with our state of mind and our trust in him. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness. Now, that's a critical statement. He leads me in the paths of righteousness. Righteousness is just an extraordinary concept. In this particular instance, righteousness means doing the right things according to God and what he wants, not what we think. And here we are gathered together this morning. The right thing to do for us and what God wants from us is love and relationship. Difficult when we're all spread out, but we can do it individually. And he just loves it. Now, I just wanted to read this. Just so, such a strong, dynamic word for you and for me in today's world. And this is why we have to gather together on a regular basis because this confirms and it invigorates our spiritual life. Psalm 24, the earth is the Lord's. Hers is it? It's the Lord's. And he's given up to us. He's given us the opportunity to manage it. And we're not doing a good job, but it doesn't matter. It still all belongs to the Lord. Then he goes on to say, the earth is the Lord's. And, and all its fullness, the world and those who dwell therein. It's his, you're his, it's everything's his. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Why? Because the earth is the Lord's. And we've got this great opportunity today, like every day, it's the beginning of the rest of our lives. And we've got songs to listen to. We've got opportunity to praise the Lord and sing to release faith. We've got to go back to Abraham. You know, it's such an extraordinary uh, narration here in Romans chapter 4. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. Giving glory to God. The Amplified Bible says here, no unbelief or distrust made him waver, doubtingly question concerning the promise of God. But he grew. Now listen to these words. This is what I'm wanting to say this morning for myself and for you. But he grew strong and was empowered by faith as, 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 as he was empowered by faith as he grew, no, he gave. And by giving, you grow. The pressure of the moment has to be overcome by us giving praise and glory to his name. This is what grows faith. God has given to us the measure of faith, but we have to develop it and we have to grow it. And what happened that made this thing so important to Abraham was that God gave him a word. And um, my fingers are a bit slippery and dry, but anyway, here it goes. <laughs> as it is written, verse 17 of chapter 4, as it is written, what has God written for you? What has God written for me? You see, as it is written, the word of the Lord is, 
I have made you the father of many nations. That's what his faith was based on. So whenever he needed it, he'd go back to the word. He'd remember what the Lord had said to him. And that's what we have to do. When doubts and distrust come, when the whirlwind of life is happening, having to wear face masks, having to get jabs, having to whatever we have to do, you know, go back to work. Is there work to go back to for some of you? It's just, you know, a pretty tumultuous time. But the word of the Lord is what we go back to, not the sight of our eyes. What do we see? Well, that's one thing, but we have to see through the eyes of the word of the Lord. And no unbelief or distrust made him waver. That's what mucks us about so much today. This, all the voices, and we want to believe the best in everybody, but it's hard not to get sceptical. But what do we have to do? We have to be fully satisfied and assured that God is able and mighty to keep his word. And his word says so clearly, if we'll praise him with all of our hearts, he comes in and dwells with us in the midst of those praises. So that's the key to success. To get out of the ruts, get out of the, the wobbles and all the fears that we have, if we'll just praise him, lift up holy hands and love him and bless him. He is worthy of our praise. Why? Because the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Wow, he owns it all. Okay, be confident in that. Understand it. It is his, you are his, and so we can bless him, we can praise him, we can surrender to him. See, this, isn't, this is not an aggressive stance. This is a surrendered stance. My hands are open, no weapons in my hands. My hands are open, I'm embracing God, and I'm giving him the praises of my mouth. Amen. Let's do it now and bless him. There is no shadow that has ever overcome your life. There is no rival that could ever stand against your mind. You've always been with us.
tithes and offering times again. Oh, I tell you what, this is always good fun because it's that great opportunity to remember now I'm able to work a miracle. I want to go back to Abraham as we did in the praise and the worship. Why? He's the father of faith. Right at those beginning chapters in Genesis, we see Abraham coming back from a victorious fight over the powers of darkness. And who meets him but Melchizedek being a type. Melchizedek is being a type in the Bible. Who he was actually, well, that's a very interesting conversation. But here is a type. He comes as the high priest. And now today, we don't come as a type. We use the type to focus on our tithes and offerings. The type is this, that Abraham gave tithe unto God. And he brought out communion. Melchizedek shared with him communion. Abraham gave tithes. Wow, what does that mean? Well, when you see it in Genesis, it's just a verse. But when you see it, it says in the New Testament, what is hidden in the Old Testament is revealed in the New Testament. And the father of our faith brought his tithe unto the priest, Melchizedek. And today, you and I have this wonderful opportunity to lock into the, it is written, it is written. What is written? That you bring your tithes unto the Lord, unto the priest the high priest, our high priest. We bring it to him. We give it to him. We speak over it. We give thanks for his blessing upon it. The opportunity to release heaven on earth in our lives. It's a tremendous opportunity. Take it. It's yours. When you give, press that button knowing that I'm releasing this unto my high priest, the Lord Jesus Christ. And remember, this Lord, this Saviour, this wonderful individual, he owns everything. Okay, that's all his anyway. So Father, I thank you that as we have this opportunity today, that our hearts would be, I don't know how to even say this, Lord, but opened up to receive your word. Your word of life, your word of victory, your word of prosperity. Thank you, Lord, for your victory today as I give my tithe to you. I press this button, but I know the money's being transferred to you into your courts in heaven by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Be blessed.
just wanna be with you. Just wanna be with you. Good morning, church. Good to see you again on the end of a screen once more, but hopefully for not too much longer, but hope you're having a wonderful morning. Uh, the glory of the Lord is filling your house and a privilege once again to be able to come into your homes and bring unto you the immutable, everlasting, engrafted, eternal Word of God, which is our source, it is our rock, it is our belief system, it is that on which we stand, that upon which we think. And I want to bring out to you some, some good things out of the Word this morning, some things that are obviously going to challenge us also in this current environment. So I'll start off getting straight into this message. Um, we're going to start in 1 John, 1 John chapter 3 and verse 10. In this the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. For this is the message that you heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. This is the message that you heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. It doesn't put stipulations around why we should love one another. Not if you agree with each other, should you love one another. The command is that we should love one another, as we have heard from the beginning. In this current time, where we are still in lockdowns to a degree, slowly coming out here in New South Wales, there is a lot of hostility in the environment. There is a lot of hostility in the media. There's a lot of hostility amongst people still. Different opinions, different ideas is creating this hostile environment and hostility in people's thoughts and hostility in people's actions. Driving people, even believers as such, to move away from the command that we should love one another. And we must be very careful in this age of hostility that we do not move away from the command. We do not move away from the expectation of what Jesus has taught us to do. Love one another. To be hostile means showing or feeling opposition or dislike. Hostile also means to be unfriendly. It means of relating to or characteristic of an enemy. It also means belligerent, antagonistic, 
and unkind. And we live in a current hostile environment. You know, Jesus actually said, you know, there are going to be days that are very difficult. So hostility to the church or to you as an individual should not be a surprise because Jesus has already told us trouble is going to come. Trouble is going to present itself to you. But amongst, amongst the world, not just here in Australia, but you see everywhere that governments are being hostile towards their citizens and citizens towards their government. We see hostility breaking forth now towards church leaders, towards church leaders' decisions. And the sad fact of the matter is, is that there is a, a wave of hostility coming towards leadership and church leadership from fellow believers, then there is a hostility towards the work of darkness. And we have to be very careful in this day and age that we are not putting our hostility, when you feel these ways and this antagonism, towards the wrong target. We must be very careful when these, because it's not ungodly necessary to be hostile, but it is ungodly when that hostility is misdirected. Hostility towards the speck I'm seeing and hearing in our brother's eyes, but not hostile toward the plank hanging out our own. It is so easy in the current environment to point fingers. It's so easy to slander. It's so easy to pick on. It's so easy to point out the faults in everybody else. But Jesus warns us, why are you pointing out the speck in your brother's eye, but you are not even being hostile to the issues hanging out your own? We must be very careful. Love one another. Because we all have faults. We all have shortcomings. And the, in these current environments, this pressure cooker environment, the pressure will actually bring out of us what is in us. And that can be either good or it could be bad. But we are, like Jesus, like pressure in the garden, what we want to come out of us is the anointing and the presence of the Holy Spirit. And through the presence of the Holy Spirit, we can think correctly and speak correctly and judge situations correctly. So the hostility toward, towards brethren, you see, we're seeing hostility towards family, amongst family, among friends, from employers to employees and employees to employers. It's a hostile environment. It's an ungodly type scenario. And the hostility is fueled, we know, by media, opinions, and self righteousness. The self righteous, the self opinionated. You know, the Bible says, do not be wise in your own opinion. We must be very careful in the current day and age that we come back to the scripture that we should love one another from the message that we have heard in the beginning. We must love one another. I thought it was interesting because you know, any form of leadership or government is, a, is an easy target. It's, it's a hard place to make decisions in an environment that is foreign to so many. But thinking about this during the week, what I found interesting when I thought about Jesus is that Jesus never raised a word, nor was he hostile to Pontius Pilate. He wasn't hostile towards Caesar or the Roman Empire. It is actually very difficult to find anywhere that Jesus says, oh my goodness, I can't believe what Caesar's doing. Even when Jesus stood before Pontius Pilate, he stood silent as a lamb. Do we learn from this man? Can we learn from Jesus' response to injustice? He never cussed out Caesar. Does this mean we move into a place of que sera, sera, whatever shall be, shall be? Absolutely not. Scripture is very clear that we are to stand up for widows and orphans. We make a stand for injustice. It is very clear. But there has to be a way that it is exercised not through hostility towards people, but going back to the command that we must love one another as we've been taught 
from the beginning. And you know what? When Jesus would have been standing there, he, he knew he didn't have to cuss out Pontius Pilate. You know, what, what did he say? Do you not think that I could call down 12 legions of angels and rescue me out of this very moment? Jesus was able to distinguish between the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light, and he was not intimidated by the Roman Empire. He was not intimidated by the power that Pilate had been given unto him. Jesus actually said, the the only authority you have over me is because there is authority given unto you from heaven. And yet Jesus knew at the snap of the fingers or the word of his mouth, he could have called down a dozen angels, legions of angels, and tore that place up. He had a right to be hostile. They were about to kill him. He was suffering injustice. He was locked down. He was being tortured. He was being beaten. And yet he relied on the strength of the Holy Spirit in these moments. We, we have to learn from Jesus. Jesus understood primarily who governed the hostility. The hostility manifested on earth is a reflection of hostility in the spirit. In Ephesians 6, 12, we know this scripture, for we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. You see, we are not wrestling against flesh and blood. Our enemy is not flesh and blood. The governments are not your enemy. Leaders and people making decisions are not manifesting, are not particularly your enemy. They may may be a manifestation of the enemy, of darkness. But your hostility towards flesh is not going to change the situation. We need to be able to learn to be hostile against the works of darkness which govern a situation. And it might be a shock to a lot of us, but putting your opinion up on Facebook is not going to change the world. It may feel good in the moment because I've been able to release my opinions and my annoyances and frustrations. And yet, what did it change? So many will want to release their annoyances and frustrations through social media, but they will not speak to the works of darkness behind the hostility. This is where the church has to rise up above the normal nuances of the world and rise into that place in the spirit to tear down the works of darkness. Jesus understood this point. Also an interesting point, you know, it took, when Israel went into the captivity of Egypt, it took 400 years for God to become hostile against the gods of Egypt. So we're not, we don't want to be like the, the original Sons of Thunder trying to call down lightning on governments or leaders or people we don't agree with. Jesus says you obviously don't know or you don't understand. This is not the days of the prophets of Baal where we're going to cast down and call down fire. If you want to call down fire, call down the fire of the Holy Ghost onto the church so the church can rise, continue to rise into her beautiful calling and shine as a light in this world. But we are not just to sit back and play the case, sarah, sarah. I'm not saying that we should be silent. We should not. But we must love one another. For this is the message that we've heard from the beginning. Hostility outworked and governed by the flesh, an unchecked soul, will lead to destruction and death. Hostility outworked and governed by the flesh and unchecked soul will lead to destruction and death. Unchecked meaning undisciplined soul. Not being able to contain your emotion, not being able to contain your thoughts, not being able to contain your rage. Just checked out, letting it all out, spewing out like a volcano, leads to destruction and death. Hostility, or in our terminology, we can call it righteous anger outworked and governed through the Holy Spirit and the check or the disciplined soul against the works of darkness and the unseen realm will lead to life, peace and victory. I'll read it again. Hostility or righteous anger outworked and governed through the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, and the checked or the disciplined soul 
against the works of darkness. So you're identifying and understanding who the enemy is in all this chaos. You have to identify who the enemy is. And the enemy is not your fellow man. Your enemy is the works of darkness who's afflicting your fellow man. Against the works of darkness in the unseen realm will lead to life, peace and victory. Either way, hostility in either form takes drive, it takes energy, it takes time and it takes thought. So we as believers, we must channel that energy, that must channel the thoughts, must channel the focus, we must channel the drive of the, and the power of the Holy Spirit towards the right resistance. And love one another, which we've been taught from the beginning. So hatred towards your fellow man, frustration towards your fellow man, pointing the finger towards your fellow man is not loving one another as we've been taught from the beginning. You have to understand who the hostile enemy is that is coming against you and coming against this world. We do not have flesh and blood enemies. So in the current day of hostility, and we know it's hostile, a day of anger, a day of hurt and bitterness and frustration, what do we do to remain Christ-like? Because it's easy to get mad, it's easy to get angry, it's easy to get frustrated, especially, you know, this is a long time, we're nearly two years going now with this chaos and hostility going on. What do we do to remain Christ-like? In all of this, the challenge is to remain Christ-like. And in Colossians chapter 2 and verse 6, it says, as you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. So you remember the first scripture, loving one another as you have been taught. Now it's saying, established in the faith as you have been taught. You've received Christ, so walk in him, step by step, day by day, moment by moment, post by post, conversation by conversation, listening by listening, news by news, everything you do, work by work, communication by communication, walk in him. Walk in the Lord Jesus Christ, rooted in him and built up in him. Roots means to go down. Built up means to go high, and even in basic construction, we know that you can only build as high as you go deep. That is why it's talking about the two references there. Rooted in him to go deep and wide, and built in him to go as high as you are deep, and established in the faith as you have been taught. The simple premise is this. Seek Christ, not COVID. Seek Christ not conspiracies. Seek Christ, not fear. Seek Christ, not unbelief. Seek Christ and his word. Seek Christ and his truth. Seek Christ and his life. Seek Christ and his Holy Spirit. Seek Christ and his Father. Seek Christ and his principles. Seek Christ, not COVID. COVID doesn't rule the world. The kingdom of COVID doesn't rule. The kingdom of Christ rules over everything. Seek Christ, not COVID. So how do we remain Christ-like? We've received him, we walk in him, we are rooted in him, and we are built up in him. But that all comes down to your focus, your meditation, your conversations, everything you have to do with his word, through prayer, all the different things we've been talking about, especially prayer. Especially prayer. Remember, Lord, teach us to pray. How are we going with that one? Are you still asking the Lord continually? It's not a one-time prayer. Lord, teach me to pray. How on earth am I meant to pray when I see so much injustice? How am I supposed to pray when I see so much oppression? How am I supposed to pray when people are losing their livelihoods, losing their lives, losing their jobs, losing their freedoms? Lord, teach me to pray. I'm getting angry, but let me rise up in righteous anger that I can attack the right places and bring light to where there is darkness. In Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 to 16, there's a fair bit of scripture there, but there's two points I want to finish off with, which I'm nearly done. 
If then you are raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind, we've talked about this for years, set your mind on the things above, set your mind not on COVID, not conspiracy, not craziness, not hostility, set your mind on things above, not on the things of the earth. Not on the things of the earth. The reason there is so much hostility is because the mind gets situated on the things of the earth instead of situated on Christ, which is life and peace. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ is our life appears, then you will appear with him in glory. But here we go. But now you yourselves are to put off all of these. This is a command to the church written in the book of Colossians chapter 3. You are to put off, it means put off means to cast away, put away or renounce, put off all these, anger, put off wrath, put off malice, put off blasphemy, put off filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, vaccinated or unvaccinated, locked down or free, put off anger, put off wrath, put off blasphemy, put off malice. Malice means the desire to hurt someone, to punish. It is commanded as a believer that we put it off, throw it off, cast it away, get rid of it. But the contrary is, once you put it off, therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on. And the word put on means to sink into sink into tender mercies, put on kindness, put on humility, put on meekness, put on long-suffering. Long-suffering, not short-suffering. Put on long-suffering. Bearing with one another and forgiving one another. And if anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. But above all these things, put on, sink into love, which we were taught from the beginning. Put on love, which is the bond of perfection, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which you were called in one body, and be thankful and let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, not poorly or in poverty, but richly, abundantly, overflowing in all wisdom, teaching, admonishing one another, encouraging one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatever you do, in word or deed, whatever you do, in word or deed, whatever you do, in word or deed, whatever you post, in word or deed, whatever you talk about, in word or deed, in whatever you do in behaviour, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to the God, the Father, through him. Whatever you do, do it in the name of Jesus. Do it for the sake of Christ. Why? Because you have put on love. Put off, put on. Put off anger, put on love. Put off blasphemy, put on righteousness. Put off malice, put on tender mercies. Put off pride, put on humility. Love one another which is what we were taught from the beginning. You know, I have a list here. I went through the scripture of that word put off and put on. And there is a whole list that believers are commanded 
to put off. Holy Ghost filled, tongue speaking, praise worshipping believers. Christ filled believers are still commanded to put off. Romans 13 12 it says, put off the works of darkness. But on the contrary, then it says, put on the armor of light. Put off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Ephesians 4.22 says, put off the old man. Ephesians 4.24 says, put on the new man. So put off, put on, put off, put on. Ephesians 4.25 says, put off lying. This is written to believers. Ephesians 6.11 says, put on the whole armor of God. Colossians 3, 8, like we just said, it says to put off anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communications, and language coming out of your mouth. Colossians 3, 12 says to put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, and long-suffering. In Hebrews 12, 1, it says every weight, to put off every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares. Ephesians 6, 14, it says to put on the breastplate of righteousness, sink into, put it on. James 1.21 says, put off all filthiness, it's emphasised all filthiness, an abundance, an overflow of wickedness, put off all malice, put off all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and put off all evil speaking. Yet in 1 Thessalonians 5.8, it says, put on the breastplate of faith and love and as a helmet, the hope of salvation. And Colossians 3.4 says, put on love. Turn to the person next to you and say, put it on. Put on love. Put on mercy. Put on righteousness. Put on long-suffering, meekness, humility, and tender mercies. Put on the whole armour of God. Put on the armour of light. Romans 13, 14. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. We're commanded to put him on. Sink into him. Let him wrap himself around us. But we have to put him on. It's easy to put on anger. That's simple. Just go with the flow of the world. That's the easy thing to do. But you're not of the world. You're in it. You're not of it. You have to put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, Psalm 30, 11 says, You have turned my sorrow into dancing, for you have put off my sackcloth and clothed me with gladness that my heart may sing praises and not be silent. We have to make the decision of what we are going to put off and what we are going to put on. It's a daily choice. It's actually a moment-by-moment choice of what we put off and what we put on. And when these things that we are commanded to put off start to rise up or influence you, you have to be able to stand strong in the Spirit and of the Holy Ghost, stand strong with your shield of faith and the sword of the Spirit and say, not today. I'm not coming, having hostility come on me today. Anger, wrath and blasphemy, you're not coming on me today. The sin that so easily ensnares, I'm putting you off. You are not getting hold of this temple of the Holy Ghost. I'm not having filthiness attach itself to me. Malice, deceit, hypocrisy, envy and all evil speaking out of my mouth. I put you off. I throw you away. You're not part of who I am. That's part of the old man, but I'm renewed man in the Lord Jesus Christ and I choose to put on the armour of light, the new man, the whole armour of God, tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, the breastplate of righteousness, the breastplate of faith and love and the helmet as the hope of salvation. I put on love and I put on the Lord Jesus Christ that I may love one another as we've been taught from the beginning. In a hostile world, be the peace, be the joy, be the rest, be the light in a place of darkness, be the deliverance for those who are held captive, be the healing for the hurting and the broken and the sick and the maimed, be the hands and feet of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Put him on and let him shine his light to all men. 
Bless you in the name of Jesus. Thank you.